Okay, today we're going to speak about um, my guru Yogi Ramaya and um, that kind of Kriya Yoga tradition which he brought to the world. And um, uh, well, he, uh, as as you know, he was a very special person. Uh, he spent years in fifties and sixties, mid of. 20th century in Himalayas together with um, quite few and quite number immortal masters and the main uh, guru was uh, Mahadhar Babaji himself and also um, he received Yogi Rama he received certain spiritual instructions and initiations from Goraknath and um, um, Nagaraj Babaji and it looked like he met some some other Mahatmas as well and um, well um, he was extremely strange and strict he was behaving in such a way like you know it was difficult to spend time with him because um, he was not um, um, you know he, he was not the, the person who wanted to become uh, famous and successful, he was just practicing himself and any small number of people who could digest him could stay and learn and um, somehow um, in, okay he was uh, teaching different disciples slightly different uh, system of Kriya and that's um, the one question and, and, and another question is that um, most of his students uh, they uh, received from Yogi Rama only this or that uh, basic pre preliminary kind of techniques which are also great and wonderful and um, uh, okay um, uh, why it's happened that uh, after he passed away 2006 uh, I mean a uh, few of his disciples now they teach people Kriya Yoga and then people ask well, how it's possible that Yogi Rama was the source but different um, um, disciples they teach sometimes slightly different and sometimes hugely different systems okay that was the Yogi Rama because um, he was uh, teaching somebody uh, more complete uh, Kriya and somebody not at all and um, you know when he was alive uh, he was not led to anybody to teach Kriya Yoga even in my uh, case okay it was end of 90s actually something like um, seven or eight years before he passed away he told me that I uh, may teach but his message was as you remember he told me that, okay one day you will start to teach but that one day actually was after he passed away so anyway, uh, Yogi Rama, uh, Yogi Rama, he he was not planning to establish any institution, and he was not establishing any institution. Even his ashram, it's a questionable. Is it ashram at all? I mean, basically, that was his house with a small um, temple building very small one with the Shivalingam and Babaji statue idol and in, when we call this small ashram actually it was just his uh, house and uh, that was 400 kilometers south from Chennai and in Chennai it was another also we call it ashram but really it was just um, uh, his uh, ancestors house uh, better to say that this is just was his house <clears throat> and uh, you know I think that um, uh, okay what was the message of Yogi Rama what was the, the, the main point <clears throat> well uh, one thing was that 
<clears throat> of course for me it was very special to stay with an old guy who was direct disciple of Mahadar Babaji and who met not only Babaji but number of other immortals and it's huge huge because when you read books about well Mahatmas and Madame Blavatsky and Yogananda and uh, when well, then the question is how real the stuff is but when you meet somebody uh, who is um, proof of that uh, reality is really really huge and um, you know it's um, difficult for me to say why he gave me really complete picture of his um, tradition and 18 big meditation techniques and uh, 144 Bija mantras which are um, like uh, seven uh, steps or seven lists of the mantras and why somebody else uh, didn't receive it I don't know but for me what was very special really breakthrough experience with the Yogi Rama was that well, you know, Yogananda, of course, he knew much more than he was able to say. It's like now we may analyze all the philosophy of Yogananda and say, okay, wait a moment, why he didn't tell this and that? Yeah, you know, it's always a, a divine plan that I'm sure Yogananda was able to say according to the permission from Mahavatar Babaji at that time in the beginning of 20th century but Yogi Rama he could bring slightly greater message to his small band of disciples and that huge um, message was that okay uh, according to the Yogananda's philosophy okay we know that Mahavatar Babaji uh, exist somewhere in Badrinath or better to say in the mountains uh, near Badrinath and this is a great source of Kriya Yoga meditation and uh, while Mother Babaji is physically immortal it's huge and we have to worship to him as the source of tradition but Yogi Rama he brought a totally different message he told that Okay, of course we have to worship to Mahatar Babaji because he is a great divine incarnation and because he is a source of tradition, but the main point is that Babaji is example. And one day you will experience the same level. Oh my god, that's huge. I mean, it's just imagine like if some Christian priest any Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox say you have to worship to Jesus. Of course we have to worship to Jesus if we are Christians. But if Gnostic tradition they say something totally different. Yes, we have to worship and respect Jesus, but the point is that with the help of meditation, through the meditation, we may experience the same level like Jesus. Oh my God, that's huge. The huge difference. It's like in the Buddhist tradition, there are branches of the Buddhist tradition and they speak only about how to worship the Buddha. But the point is to experience the same uh, absolute reality like Buddha. Okay, Yogi Rama, he spoke about Mahatar Babaji. Okay, let us say that the, the huge difference from Yogananda was that uh, Yogi Rama he told us that really not not only Mahadar Babaji on that level of Shiva Swarupa Samadhi, which is highest God realization and physical mortality, but huge number, thousands of immortal yogis. You know, I myself was in Badrinath number of times with my students and. Um, that was nice to practice in Badrinath and in the area around Badrinath and you know now we have 21st century by the way and in Badrinath it become like more and more modern more and more hotels restaurants you know just walk around everywhere <laughs> somebody 
But anyway, it's a very special place. And the question is, okay, uh, just in all that mountains which are just uh, in front of us here in Badrinath, that was my question, yeah? Thousands of immortal yogis, how can we um, accept, understand, grasp, you know, I mean, all that, you know, we see physical reality, mountains, cars, people, hotels, but thousands of the you know, Mahatmas in a golden body, they stay somewhere, but we just can't meet them because of our ignorance. But anyway, the, the main point again and again, again and again, let me repeat, that Yogi Ramak told that in the process of spiritual evolution, the process of divine evolution, one day you will experience the same supreme level of uh, absolute enlightenment which is Shiva Swarupa Samadhi and that is so great experience of uh, divine consciousness that even physical flesh, physical body, physical matter going through the process of wonderful transformation and become immortal. And of course, uh, his point was that immortality, physical immortality, is not the point, not goal. Goal is self-inquiry and quest for the God inside your spiritual heart. But the supreme result, supreme experience, which is difficult to imagine, includes even transformation of the flesh experience uh, of physical immortality, and that is Shiva Svarupa Samadhi. And let us read okay, lectures and books written by great Vivekananda Swami, great Yogananda, great Adi Shankaracharya. They all mention only up to level of Nirvikalpa. But from Yogi Ramayak it was possible to know that, yeah, yeah, yes, Adi Shankara and Yogananda, they knew about something greater, but just they didn't tell because of certain reason. But now we have chance to know that even after Nirvikalpa Samadhi is the huge uh, uh, level of Shiva Svarupa Samadhi, which is uh, also the physical immortality, which is just byproduct of, of course, self-inquiry after all. And um, so it means um, the, the, the wonderful saying of Yogi Ramayak, like, uh, seek Babaji to become Babaji. Like, you know, it's not the question is that we have to worship to Babaji because he is great. We have to use Babaji as the source of tradition and as example. And it's like the same way, like, you know, if you say to the Buddhist, you, you don't need to worship. Of course, it's nice to worship to Buddha, but the main point to become Buddha. It's like to say to the Hindu, of course, you have to worship to Krishna or Shiva. Well, but the main point to become Shiva, to discover your Shiva consciousness, your Krishna consciousness. And of course, for the Christians, yeah, that's good to worship to Jesus. But the main point to become Jesus, in a sense, Christ consciousness. Because, okay, in the West, we have a, a number of crazy people who are just proclaiming, okay, I am Jesus the Christ. That's just mental hospital, nothing more. But, I mean, if you're in the state of Christ consciousness, that's good. Why not? But if you're really in a state of Christ consciousness, then you're easily able to see in a, in a person in front of you the same Christ consciousness. That's the point. That, that's the reason why sometimes people say the top level of enlightenment means to discover God inside you. But that's not the point. The top level, when you're able to see this God in any person in front of you, that's, that's uh, by the way, Advaita. When you see God in each and every uh, uh, living being, human being in front of you. And sometimes it's not easy job to do. So, and uh, <clears throat> anyway, mm, we have, um, like, in... Um, our previous video we discussed okay we have so many Kriya Yoga branches schools uh, kinds of Kriya Yoga and even Yogi Rama gave uh, birth to the um, number of branches which are quite different um, anyway Kriya Yoga is tool 
the, the main meaning of this tool is self-inquiry and if we use this tool for the self-inquiry then it's the point for example we can go and learn okay Kriya Yoga from that kind of okay tradition which I teach wonderful oh you can go to uh, well uh, maybe to, to do Ananda tradition which is uh, by Kriyananda Swami or you can go to Shalendra Sharma or you can go to Shivananda Ashram or you can go to any other place including Buddhist um, schools uh, uh, like Nyingma, Kagyu, Karma Kagyu, Drukpa Kagyu, all that Buddhist traditions who cares? Important is that self-inquiry and just then make step to the sadhana or meditation from <clears throat> philosophical discussion to the silence and meditation then we have chance one day more and more um, to come to the uh, so-called actual experience and actual experience is not something which you know like <clears throat> one moment okay previous moment i was stupid ignorant idiot next moment i am buddha it's not like that it's a step by step and we're practicing and we're experiencing something and that's already actual experience then in a few weeks maybe something else in a few years maybe something else and it's like long journey which is not even for one lifetime you know and um, only if we were able to combine like philosophy of self-inquiry and meditation which is about mid-brain then that's that's the point and even when we discuss our you know huge number of 18 big meditation techniques maybe like you know we we already discussed it so many times that maybe for somebody it's nice to practice all of them a huge wonderful but also it's possible to take one or two maybe five of that techniques but just just practice seriously practice and then the question is of experience and uh, um, you know, it's not only experience, it's not only something which is for the Kriya Yoga. Real Christianity is about experience of Holy Spirit and Christ Consciousness. Real, you know, Buddhism is about <clears throat> experience of the Buddha Consciousness. So that means experience is, uh, is the huge question. And of course, people ask, who is the one who is experiencing? Who is the one who is practicing? And I may say that in a sense nobody is practicing. Meditation just happened. It's like in uh, Vijnan Bhairav Tantra in the very end Lord Shiva just tells that 21,600 times a day you breathe in, breathe out. So it means meditation happened 24 hours a day. Point is that we can't notice that Lord God practicing meditation inside us non stop. <laughs> so that means the question is who is meditating? Nobody is meditating. It just happened. We have to notice. But to notice is a small job, but we have to do it. You know, and um, if you take all that techniques of Kriya Yoga, you know, we contemplate, we visualize something which has already happened inside our chakras, inside our channels it's not imagination we just notice certain processes spiritual processes which are already happened and then naturally one day more and more step by step because it's like many steps not immediate something great step by step uh, happen that we may notice absolute reality of our consciousness. <clears throat>